What do you think about when you think about beautiful, beautiful pillows of white clouds just brazing the bright blue sky, the warmth on your face, the warmth in the body stretching all the way down to the beautiful, beautiful green grass and flowers that bloom. Just a time of presence, space with love. Now the human mind and the energetic resonance are beyond powerful. But if we're in decision fatigue, we're feeling uncertainty or too rigid, it truly builds up into mental clutter or stagnation, not only in our mind, but also in our body and the resonance around us. And what is able to soften that, to bring into a resonance that kind of washes it and just lessens that tension a little bit, is by taking the time to water the garden in our mind. In today's short story, or perhaps a walking meditation, is for you. Perhaps this is the exact right time and the exact thing that you need to hear. Now there's this quote that states that every blade of grass has its angel that bends over it and whispers, grow, grow. When you hear that, Imagine the face of a child when he or she hears, you are so precious. You can do it. I'm so glad that you're here. And just picture the look of a loved one's face in response to you, that you are incredible and perfect as you are. This is your true nature. And you are such a sense of joy. And I am here for you. Thank you so much for being in my life. Now this brings the question of what kind of seeds or information are you allowing to enter your consciousness, whether that be through media, people in your life, podcasts you listen to, sloppy conversations with those around you that you may find engaging or FOMO, but they're not really truly adding richness to your life. What if, like a blade of grass or a tender seed waiting to become itself, you were the recipient of the continual whisper of you are incredible. The presence of your true nature here and right now is all that is needed and it is made to grow. And how would the lives of those you love be different if you were the whisper to them? Maybe just starting softly in your spirit warming up to the judgmentalness that we build up towards others, perhaps to keep ourselves safe or sometimes unconsciously not even knowing that we're doing it. Now, this brings me to how do we become the master gardener of our mind, of our life? Becoming a master gardener of our relationships and ourselves requires us to really truly go deeper and to learn how to become more intimate with the garden of our consciousness. And initially the seed of mindfulness develops into a wholesome formation through repetition and returning to whatever it is that is happening in this present moment. And with a lens of mindfulness, or sometimes I use the word full agency, where we move out of the back of our mind 
we're out of the right and the lights left side of our, our ears trying to just capture what we can hear just in case we don't want to miss out but it actually detracts us and pulls us away from the presence of our consciousness and so with this lens it's easier to observe if we soften that gaze Perhaps you find yourself doing that right now, whatever you're looking at, just looking straight forward and just softening the gaze, allowing the mind to relax, the thoughts to just dim just a little bit and allowing the eyes just in the left and the right peripheral vision. See that just expanding and bringing in the entirety of where you are right now, just practice. You can pretend, you can make it up, but you can't mess it up. Go ahead and just pretend with me. And as that gaze stretches at the left and the right, bringing in as much as you possibly can, perhaps now just it tires your eyes and you find yourself wanting to close your eyes. Or maybe you go back into a super sharp lens, being able to focus now, feeling the brain and all of the rumination coming to the front almost like it's just kissing your pineal gland right in between the two eyes, which we call the third eye. And with this lens of just softness, it's easier to observe the seeds that lie deep in our consciousness, to see and feel how we may be reacting, to learn how to water or transform these seeds and to really aerate the soil so that we have this more healthy circulation between the soil and the garden of our mind, our consciousness. And so how do we become this master gardener? Well, first we have to be a gatekeeper. And the first step towards becoming a master gardener is to truly develop the sense of awareness the emotional awareness of how the quality of our thoughts, of our emotions, leave us clues, the quality of our lives and how it's influenced by the seeds that have been watered. And everything that affects our consciousness enters metaphorically as a seed. And the work of the master gardener is that of a gatekeeper and the protector of the garden of our consciousness. Now, according to Thich Nhat Han, beautiful poet, he says that our mind is a field in which every kind of seed is sown, seeds of compassion, joy, and hope, seeds of sorrow, sometimes fear and difficulty. And seeds refer to all the information that enters our awareness and if we allow it to get stored in our consciousness. Now using this awareness, think of a perhaps a typical day. And just now if your eyes are closed or if you just relax just a little bit more, start to feel the rush running to one thing to another thing. And perhaps feel now the longing of wanting to take back full agency of your life not allowing other people's seeds to be watered by your consciousness and your agency and your attention, but first watering yours. And what kind of seeds or information are you allowing to enter into your consciousness? People, conversations, location. Even the cleanness or the messiness of your house. Our consciousness leaves clues. And as parents and those who maybe are responsible for being involved in the well being of others, how do we protect the consciousness and the precious potential of the human garden, the collective consciousness in our care? Now, there is duality in life. We need both, it is just a spectrum of light and dark. And so there are seeds of suffering and seeds of love, and these seeds of consciousness fall into two distinct categories, one of suffering and one of love. 
And so consider what happens in our relationships when we witness or experience someone's anger, their violence, their jealousy, or their sense of craving. The act or behavior is usually first noted in the proprioceptive, the energy that we start to feel coming in. So we, we sense first through the energetic body and it moves into our mind and consciousness. And immediately those thoughts, those feelings and perceptions arise and call us to really create this mental formation, the story in our mind that is attached to something that felt similar or perhaps we wanna protect ourselves from that feels similar. And so when we experience story over and over again, our mind's level of consciousness, a part of our garden that we see simultaneously triggers a response in our underground. And when the seeds of suffering are experienced or watered, our typical response is to avoid or suppress them by pushing them down deep, deep into the soil of our consciousness, to put them in the dark, and the same holds true in our relationships when the seeds of love are experienced or nurtured. We don't suppress them, but we do allow them to take root in our store of consciousness. We hold them precious. And thus becoming aware and the watering of the awareness of these seeds of love and embracing the transformation, even through that of suffering, allowing the sensory system to acknowledge it, question it, be curious with our imagination, and then consciously choose within the garden of our mind is how we create a healthy and mindful relationship with ourselves and others. Powered by our curiosity, asking the question, hmm, I wonder where that comes from, not attached to it, and allow the subconscious to show you. Now, several years ago, I remember listening to a podcast of a husband and wife and the power of this metadata of this consciousness that they shared. And it seeped in deep in my soul. And I wanted to just share it with you, whether you're in a relationship or not. I know for me that the me to the we is this transposition that we are moving into rapidly into this new world that we want to create. And it was this sharing of love and kindness. And they would do this right before they went to sleep. And I do this now with myself and I then reposition it out to all of my loved ones and then all of their loved ones. And I imagine them saying it to all of their loved ones, reaching over the whole entirety of the earth. And in doing so, the quality of the sleep becomes deeper and more restful with a mind of gratitude and conscious awareness. But it all starts with ourselves. And so I will go ahead and repeat these and maybe you want to write them down or come back to them. These are truly to be nourished and cherished and watered, not to be rushed. And it starts with, may I be filled with loving kindness? May I be free from suffering? May I find joy? May I be well? May I find inner peace? May I be love? And after directing this loving kindness to ourselves, we then can, as noted, extend the thoughtfulness of these loving, kind, resonant words to perhaps a partner, to each other and repeating those phrases above and replacing the I with you and sending that loving kindness to people in your life that you love, especially those around you that are struggling in this time. And invariably, even they will sleep better because they will feel the entanglement of a resonance of love that they probably haven't felt in a long time from someone so mindful and conscious and taking control of your agency as you are right now. 
repeating, may you be filled with loving kindness. May you be free from suffering. And may you find joy. May you be well. And may you find peace. So my friend, I, I ask you to slow down, to cherish the moments. Think about your mind as a garden, your ecosystem as a garden. And selective watering, because learning to love first ourselves and others around us in a non-reactionary way, we understand another person and we will know which messages will allow us to reinforce our relationship. And it allows us to look at the myriad of seeds that we can plant. Each person is unique. Planting seeds take precedent in our life when we first become conscious of that there are seeds to mindfully place in the garden of our mind, in our heart, in our soul. So I leave you with just a seed sampler, perhaps some small sayings that aren't necessarily affirmations, but affirmations, so that your subconscious can continue to seek the love and to feel the nourishment by seeing it all over in your life right now. And so these affirmations are what allow the mind and the subconscious mind to go and seek and prove to you that it is true. So let's go ahead and depart on mastering the garden of our self-leadership and allowing the truth to find you in these following seed samplers of affirmations with the question, it is amazing. Why is it that I love myself so much so that it allows me to love others abundantly or compassion with how is it that my work, my passion project allows me to feel my heart so open to serve others that are suffering or tapping into joy why is it that I bring so much joy to my heart so that I can bring it then to every person that I meet? Or your speech. It's amazing how I speak from my heart, my place of truth, and I know that it is true. And it's amazing how I know what I speak is appropriate. or fear, an affirmation of when fear arises, how is it that I am aware of past patterns and that I can consciously start to quickly shift to loving myself, knowing that I am safe here and now, and others feel that same presence when I am able to become conscious of it or anger. How is it that even today I aspire to look deeply at this core source of my anger and commit to pouring the essence of love over it to dispel where it was first born? There you are, my friend, growing the seeds of love watering through growing mindful relationships with self-leadership and with others and to others. May you be filled with loving kindness and may you be well on your journey to watering and nourishing the garden of your mind. All my love, all my light. <laughs>